Sure. So the, the first thing to know is that tofersin is an antisense oligonucleotide. So this is designed to lower the RNA. That's the way the, these kinds of drugs work. They lower the RNA and then the protein falls according to the uh, half-life of the protein. And this is a drug that's targeted for SOD1 or superoxide dismutase 1 related ALS. So that's what this drug is. And then the other thing to mention is that it's delivered intrathecally. So this is a, a typical sort of lumbar puncture, and then the drug is delivered intrathecally and distributes throughout the brain and spinal cord um, to motor neurons uh, and other cells within the brain and spinal cord. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a couple of important things that, that came out of this study. The first is that um, the levels of SOD1, the protein that we're targeting, were lowered in the cerebral spinal fluid of the participants that were treated with the drug. This is good news. It shows that the drug is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, the second uh, piece, and this is also in, in terms of biomarkers, is that neurofilament was lowered. Neurofilament is an intermediate filament protein that um, uh, leaks out of neurons and shows up in the extracellular spaces, cerebral spinal fluid and plasma, for, um, in a whole variety of uh, neurodegenerative diseases. So ALS is one. It's a nonspecific marker, but a marker of neurodegeneration. And neurofilament was substantially lowered with treatment uh, with tofersin. My interpretation of those data are that we've substantially lowered the neurodegenerative disease process. So that's the, the second point uh, about tofersin. And then, um, and then clinical function. Mm -hmm. So th that would be the, the third or maybe fourth uh, point to highlight. I think we should acknowledge that the primary endpoint from this for this study was not met. That was looking at a um, rapidly progressive population at the ALS functional rating scale. So a, a functional rating scale for ALS, 48 points, you lose points uh, uh, as you become uh, weaker or progress with the disease. And that was not met. But yet, if you look out at later time points, so there's an open label extension where we had the opportunity to follow participants for um, a year or more uh, on tofersin, and 88% um, of the people in this study uh, decided to, to move into the open label extension um, when they had the opportunity six months after the placebo control part. And I should mention there's 36 on placebo, 72 on drug in this study. And so when you look further out at the 52-week time point, mm -hmm. now you begin to see much more of a clinical effect. You see an effect on, um, on the ALS functional rating scale, on breathing, for example, a slow vital capacity, but a measure of breathing, and then handheld dynamometry or strength. And so on each of those measures, we see an effect at 52 weeks, those that initially started on tofersin, we called them early start tofersin, mm -hmm. doing better than those on the placebo. And in both groups, these later time points, you see stabilization of function. Mm -hmm. And my, um, I often call out my favorite piece of data from, from this, which is the handheld dynamometry, the strength data. Mm -hmm. You look carefully at those data, and we have to be... I, uh, careful and cautious about the interpretations at this point, low N, um, relatively low N and, and some variability, but it looks like people are getting stronger. Mm -hmm. That's what the, the data show out of 52 weeks, especially in the group that are on um, early start tofersin. So those are some of the, I could talk about more of the other data if you'd like, of course, there are other pieces that were in there and other pieces presented at the Northeast ALS Consortium uh, meeting. Uh, just recently that, that you referenced, um, but those are some of the highlights.